Hello, this is Rakesh Rao from Design Sense Software Technologies, Bangalore, the sales and support point for BricsCAD in India. In this BricsCAD video, I'm going to show you how you can create 2D parametric drawings in BricsCAD. Now to create 2D parametrics, you have to create what is called as a parametric block. This is an example of a already created parametric block. And if I go to the properties, you can see that in addition to the standard block properties there are additional parameters which have been created here which was done using the parametric features now my end goal in this is to create a rectangle which is parametric and four offsets on all the sides which can be independently controlled by these values top offset bottom offset right offset and left offset then of course the length and height are the primary parameters so when you change any one of those parameters for example if I change the length to 250 or if I change the bottom offset to 15 the rectangle will adjust itself in its geometry as well as in its offsets now this is exactly what we want to achieve in parametric drawings any geometry which can be controlled by a set of parameters that have been defined with relationships is what makes a parametric drawing now in this video let us see how we can do it from scratch so I switch to a blank drawing and I'm going to close this properties window here so to create the block I'm going to start with the rectangle which is 100 by 50 so this is now a closed polyline I'm going to use the block command and create a parametric block now you can see that we don't have a block in this drawing so a new one is being created it's called parametric rectangle the pick point for the base is this endpoint and select entities all these convert to block so now you can see that this rectangle has got converted into a block which is called parametric rectangle now at the moment it's a normal block so I'm going to convert this into a parametric block so I double clicked and entered block editor using the b edit command and uh, now I'm ready to parameterize this drawing now there are different ways in which you can parameterize a drawing so in this video you will see the way that I use to create a parametric drawing so first off I prefer to work with basic entities I don't like polylines so I'm going to explore this and I'm going to work with line entities to define my parameters once you have these line entities next you can go to the parametric menu from the pull down menu or you can also get it from the ribbon which I will show you later so in the parametric menu you can see the top few items here till equal these are geometric constraints and what you see here these are the dimensional constraints so to begin with let me explain the concept in parametrics you need to define what is fixed what is coincident what is parallel what is vertical what is horizontal and what are equal sides so first let us start with fixed constraint so I go to fix and I'm going to select this point here and say that I want to fix this point why because the lower left point is my reference or base point so the moment I pick the lower left point here it has automatically detected any one side and put a fixed constraint here if you move the mouse to the constraint you can see in the tooltip that this is a fixed constraint and by the highlight you can also tell as to which entity this fixed constraint applies to now we need to fix the bottom also so we are going to use again the fixed constraint and now I'm going to use the entity option I click this so the moment I choose this automatically it knows that the other entity is this one so now these two sites have been locked with a fixed constraint now one of the things I'm going to do is to set my e snaps or object snaps as some of you know it to only go to endpoints because in this exercise I just want to snap to all the endpoints so I'm going to switch off all the other e snaps and leave only the endpoint snap on so I have the fixed constraint in place next I'm going to create the offsets for this 
rectangle so I'm going to start the offset command I'm going to give an offset value of 25 so all the sides I'm going to offset by 25 now this 25 is just an arbitrary number for the purpose of this exercise later of course it's going to be parameterized so you can put whatever value you want now the next step is to define the other constraints so we will start with the parallel constraints so you need to tell which two entities are parallel to each other so that that relationship is maintained throughout this design so this is parallel to this so you can see that already the parallel constraint has been applied here and I can repeat the last command by simply typing enter or spacebar so I'm going to say this is parallel to this similarly this is parallel to this and this is parallel to this so you can see all the horizontal and vertical lines have been parallelly constrained next let us go to the horizontal constraint you need to specify now which are the horizontal lines so this is horizontal again pressing spacebar repeat the command this is horizontal this is horizontal this is horizontal now we go to the vertical constraint this is vertical this is vertical this is vertical this is vertical so as we added these constraints you can see that they appear here as dimmed icons and when you move your mouse on these constraint icons you can see what type of constraint it is and if you right click you also have some options to edit the constraints like either delete or hide and so on okay so now we have added horizontal and parallel constraint now next we will add the equal constraint so this is equal to this press enter and repeat the command this is equal to this this is equal to this this is equal to this now why is it equal because that is my design intent I want the offset sides to be equal it's only the distance that is going to be parameterized now we are done with the basic geometric constraints for now we will add another vertical constraint later but before that let us now do the dimensional constraint and to do the dimensional constraints I am now going to switch on the ribbon not because it's available only in the ribbon but I also want you to see how you can access these items from the ribbon so once you switch on the ribbon and click on the parametric tab you can see the geometric constraints are here the same things what you picked from here and the dimensional constraints are here the same thing what you picked here so we click on linear go to horizontal and here I'm going to type E for entity because I'm going to pick this as my entity for the horizontal dimension constraint so I'm going to pick it here this is going to be my length now when you add a constraint where one already exists you may sometimes see this message called over constraining now this is only a warning you can ignore it because in this case I know for sure that I need a dimensional constraint as well as a horizontal constraint so I let that be I go back to vertical E for entity pick this place the vertical dimensional constraint here so I have placed two dimensional constraints representing the length and the height now I also need to create four more dimensional constraints representing the offset values for top bottom left and right now before that I'm going to go to panels and switch on this parameters and constraints here you can see d1 and d2 which are the default values so d1 I'm going to rename this as length and d2 I'm going to rename this as height so now I have meaningful values for my constraints so it's easier for me to recognize them later we move this a bit to the left I go back to horizontal constraints now I'm going to place the offset values so from this point to this point I'm going to place a dimensional constraint here which will be my right offset from this point to this point I'm going to place a constraint here which will be my left offset 
now I go to the vertical dimension constraint from this point to this point I'm going to place it here and from this point to this point I'm going to place another bottom offset constraint here so you can now see that I have created four new constraints d1 d2 d3 d4 so I'm just going to click on this and rename them d1 is actually the right offset you can see it here so I'm going to type RO for right offset D2 is the left offset so I'm going to type LO D3 is the top offset so I'm going to type TO and D4 is the bottom offset so I'm going to type BO now I'm done with naming the constraints but we are not yet done with the entire constraining game uh, if you go back here there is something called as a coincident constraint the coincident constraint is used to tell the system which of these points must always be coincident and must use the same two lines to join at that point so the first coincident constraint that I'm going to use here the auto constraint option is better so I'm going to type a this entity and this entity so you can see that between these two entities there is a coincident constraint again auto constraint this entity this entity again enter to repeat auto constrain this entity this entity so once again auto constrain this entity this entity now we have a rectangle which has coincident fix parallel horizontal and vertical constraints as well as the equal constraint now the last one that is remaining is to define a vertical constraint between these endpoints here and the horizontal constraints as well so that the rectangle will always move in the correct geometry so we go back here to the vertical constraint now here I'm going to use the two point option because in this case I'm not using the entities to define my verticality I'm using two points to specify that they must always be vertical so I use the two point option the first point is this second point is this again the two point option first point is this second point is this again the two point option first point is this second point is this again the two point option first point is this second point is this in a similar manner let's do the horizontal constraint so I click the horizontal constraint the two point option this with this this with this this with this this with this so I think I have now defined my complete constraints list for this rectangle so let us see how this looks so I'm going to use the B close command and close the block editor with the save option so you can see now this is my drawing and this is my block so I'm going to right click properties so all my parameters have appeared here so let's say length I'm going to change this to 150 so the length has changed the height we change it to 75 so the height has changed the right offset we change to 40 left offset we change to 15 top offset which changed to 35 and the bottom offset we change to 20 so you can see that this rectangle is now fully parameterized both in its original dimensions length and width as well as in the four offsets that we have defined so this is how you create a parametric block in BricsCAD. It's pretty simple once you get a hang of it. It took me also a little while to understand how each of these constraints work. And I hope this video will help you to understand it much faster than it took me. Please try it out using this video. And if you have any questions, you can always get back to me. Thank you.